Hey guys, welcome back to Starfield. It's been a long day, and um, probably the second most chaotic day in Ash's life, I would think. So, uh, yeah, it's going to hit the hay, I think. But just before we do, maybe take a moment to reflect on what we've experienced throughout the day with, with the experience points that we've gained and it, it, let's just check out the experience and <laughs> skills you receive one skill point to spend every time you level up each skill also unlocks a challenge complete the challenge and then spend a skill point to rank up the skill okay i've heard a little bit about this the top row represents basic skills the rows below are locked until you spent a maximum number uh, a minimum number of skill points in that category right so okay i see so this makes sense. So I've heard a little bit about this. This skill tree um, and the way that you spend XP points and, and level up points and that sort of thing differs a little bit from most RPGs in that you can't just, for example, um, sort of save up a handful of points and, and just blast your way down the skill tree uh, as you go. You've got to do a certain number of things to progress the next level. So for example, with what's this, pistol cert certification, if you were to, it's my understanding, if you were to unlock that skill, each skill has four levels to it. So if you were to unlock that skill, you couldn't then immediately spend a second skill point hammering through to the next level of it. You'd have to do something. You have to complete a challenge in order to be able to spend that second point on the next level of that particular skill. So with pistol certification, I'd, I'd imagine it would be a certain number of pistol kills. Um, so... And it looks like in order to unlock the next lot, so this, so Particle Beams, for example, says I need to spend four more points in the top level of combat to unlock the advanced combat skills, this line here. So that makes sense. So we know that our background gives us, uh, was it three? Yeah, three skills to start with, one of which was the weightlifting, um, which I'm partway through the challenge. There we go. Okay, so... Yeah, weight, weight training can significantly increase one's ability to carry weapons and equipment both in space and on the ground. So we're already rank one because of our background as a homesteader. But to get to rank two, I first need to complete that challenge in the bottom left. Sprint for a thousand meters while at 75% or more of your maximum load capacity to get there. Well, I mean, <laughs> the challenge itself should unlock reasonably soon, seeing as I'm sprinting a fair amount of the time and I'm over encumbered pretty much all of the time. So, okay, well... We'll see how long that takes to unlock. Not long, I'd imagine. So, and again. Oh, it varies by... Interesting, it varies by skill tree. So we need to uh, spend... Oh, I wonder if that, because we've got the first level of that, whether that has counted as spending a point. Because this says spend three more points to unlock the next one, whereas the others say four. Let's see, what's... Well, this one, we've been granted two skills right off the bat. Yeah, and it says spend two more points in science to unlock advanced science skills. So that makes sense that each one of these, each level in each one of these counts as a point, even if we didn't directly spend one. Okay. Right, well, let's take a look through. Um, it's about time that we, we started spending some of these skill points. I've got two of them to, to dole out. So let's see. Boxing. Um, what's considered a sport of kings? Boxing is still practiced as a recreational competitive activity. We're not going to go hand to hand. Um, I don't think that's something that we're going to be chasing after. Fitness. In space, the greatest commodity is oxygen, and the increased lung capacity gained by a regular physical fitness regimen is essential to survival. So you can unlock 10% more oxygen. That could come in handy, though I don't think I don't think I've had any issues with running out of oxygen just yet. Stealth, for a competent who values discretion above all else. Um, I don't think I'm going to be specking into stealth. That's not really the play style. Ash is a little bit more um, <laughs> blunt than that, I guess. Weightlifting, like I say, we're, we're in the process of unlocking that as we go. Wellness, by embracing an active lifestyle and good nutrition habits, one may improve their overall sense of health and even gain prolonged life expectancy. Increases maximum health by 10%. That would be useful. That would be very useful. That could be one to uh, to bury a point into. Let's take a look. And then as you rank, it increases by 20, 30, and 40%. Nice. Okay, definitely one to look at later on. Social. Commerce. The settled systems, free market economy, almost anyone with the right skill set can open and run a successful business. 
Uh, unlock. Buy for 5% less and sell for 10% more. Okay, so this is bartering. The, the description at the top kind of makes it sound as though you could open a store on a planet somewhere. I don't know whether that is a thing. Gastronomy. Access to brand new worlds means access to brand new ingredients, and there's almost no limit to the delicious foods and drinks a talented chef can prepare. You can craft specialty foods and drinks and research additional recipes at the research lab. Now, this is something I was thinking of. I don't... I'm not in a rush to go crafting new foods, but I did want to see if there's anything around here that makes it so that food heals more. Um... Pursuing tactics. Would it be under social? I'm not sure it would. Wouldn't it be under combat? Science? Or tech, maybe? Spacesuit, weapon engineering, zoology, chemistry. Um, ooh, planetary habitation. While outpost building is always challenging, doing so in a world with a dangerous environment requires specialized training. You can build outposts on planets with extreme temperature. Oh! So I know that there's outpost building, but it sounds as though you might be limited to specific biomes. I suppose that would make sense, because if you just threw up a, a quick shelter on a planet with no atmosphere or a planet with extreme temperatures, then you, it's kind of pretty much useless. Whereas you could get away with it if it was on a temperate world with, a, with an oxygen-rich environment. Um, it's got to be something food related surely i would have thought decontamination martial arts new oh hello nutrition advanced nutrition science is no substitute for good life choices and knowing how much and when to eat it uh, can be just as important as the food itself food and drink are 10 percent more effective yes and 20 percent, 30 50 percent. so that would make sense so that would mean that food heals you much more than it does currently although Food and drink are now 50% more effective. I was seeing food that restored like four or five per points of health, so that would only take it to sort of seven or eight, so... Mm, okay. So, let's see. Uh, where were we? Gastronomy. Persuasion. Uh, unlock 10% increased chance of success when persuading someone. We haven't seen a persuasion interaction yet, I don't think. Scavenging. Unlock. There's a chance you'll find extra credits when searching containers. That would be useful. Never say no to credits. Theft. Unlock the ability to pickpocket targets. Again, kind of like the stealth one. I'm not really going for a stealthy, slide about -y sort of character, so I don't know how useful that would be. Ah, ballistics. Centuries of conflict have proven when it comes to threat elimination, few things stack up to the reliable power of high-speed projectiles. That could be useful. So we're using projectile weapons at the moment with that handgun and the the um, the Crimson Fleet rifle that I picked up. So having a bit of a boost to the damage of those would be handy. So potential point sink there. Dueling. Uh, melee weapons do 25% damage. We're not really going for a hand-to-hand -hand build. Lasers. Ah! Now, I did pick up a couple of laser guns before, didn't I? I tried that laser pistol, and it wasn't particularly effective. So, makes sense, like I said at the time, that we can spec up to uh, sort of make better use of them, I guess. Laser weapons do 10% more damage. Personal laser weapons are in widespread use across the settled systems, and specialised training can greatly increase their effectiveness. Pistol certification. Pistols do 10% more damage. Ah... Considering the popularity of the personal sidearm in the settled systems, familiarity with such weapons is often considered essential. Maybe that would be worth putting a point into soon as well, so that I don't necessarily block myself into going down the ballistics or the laser route, but instead, because I'm mainly using handguns. I quite like handguns. Hmm. Yeah, at least pistol certification would keep my option as to what sort of pistol I use open. Shotgun certification. The cornerstone of close quarters combat, or CQC, is the shotgun has proven a simple, deadly weapon for hundreds of years. Shotguns do 10% more damage. I I don't tend to use shotguns very much in games. Maybe that should change. Maybe I could uh, pick up a shotty or two. Science. Astrodynamics. Advanced technology is one thing, but it takes skill, patience, and a little bit of love to coax even more capability out of a ship's grav drive. Increase the grav jump range of drives by 15%. Yeah, I need to get my head around that as well. There's there's a certain range that you can you can jump using your grav drive. There is some form of fuel level 
mechanic to this as well. Um, but I don't know exactly how it works. I don't think you collect resources to refuel your ship. I think it's sort of an automatic thing once you reach a spaceport. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the limitations of that actually are. Geology. So this is one that we've already got a level in. Newly discovered minerals mined from alien planets and moons have directly led to some incredible technological advancements. So, uh, get more common and uncommon inorganic resources from surface objects. Um, surface objects, surface objects, okay. So, yeah, just th th that's more resource gathering by the looks of it, which would probably come in handy when we're base building, I guess. Medicine. Only through advancements in medical training and technology has humanity been able to withstand the galaxy's many dangers. Unlock med packs, trauma packs, and emergency kits restore 10% additional health 10% faster. Ooh. Again, could be worth specking into down the line. Research methods. Unlock research... Uh, resources required to craft items and complete research projects is reduced by 10%. I think that'll be handy to come back to once I've actually figured out how research and building things actually works. Because I'm, I'm still a little bit hazy on that at the moment. Surveying. Use the hand scanner to scan 10 unique resources, flora or fauna. Uh, adds an optional zoom to the hand scanner. Ooh, that'd be handy. Um, oh, no, that's a rank that we've already got. Through the homesteader uh, background. So we've already got an optional zoom on the hand scanner. Okay. And scan distance is increased to 20 meters. Uh, another level... So this just adds more zoom and a greater scan distance. Okay. I suppose that'd be handy if we're on planets and surveying potentially dangerous creatures and we want to keep our distance. And then finally, tech. Ballistic weapon systems. So this tech is mainly going to be to do with our ship, I guess. While there have been significant advancements in shipborne weaponry, sometimes the simplest tool is the most effective. Ballistic ship weapons have a 10% increased damage and cost 20% less to use in targeting mode. Targeting mode. So is that um, when we've pressed A and locked on to an enemy, I guess? Boost pack training. Hello. Specialized training and innovations in personal mobility systems have allowed for unfettered exploration on alien worlds. You can only utilize boost packs. That's very appealing. Thank you very much. Piloting. As more people journey into space, the number of those certified to effectively pilot various types of spacecraft has increased dramatically. You can now utilize ship thrusters. Can I utilize ship thrusters? Have I not been utilizing ship thrusters before? I'm a bit confused by that. What's the difference between just using your engine and using thrusters thrusters as i understand it are sort of um like the little jets of compressed gases that that shoot out the sides of spacecraft to, to make minor course corrections but well, why would i need those when i can use the engines to get around hmm, okay anyway uh, security. While the standardized digital locking mechanism is renowned for its security, any code that can be broken, any code can be broken with the proper training. You can attempt to hack advanced locks, and two auto attempts can be banked. Nice. Would be good to unlock that sooner or later. Um, yeah, because I, I I hate coming across lock boxes that I can't access. It does annoy me somewhat. Uh, targeting control systems. Missile weapons are favored because they can lock onto an enemy ship, but an intimate knowledge of tracking systems can make them even more effective. So that unlocks the ship targeting functionality. So I remember from the trailers that you can target subsystems of enemy ships, like target the shields to bring those down and uh, target the engines to, to cut those out so that you can catch up with, the, with enemies and even board them. So that would be good to spec into a little bit later. Nice. So we've got two skill points at the moment. So I'm thinking... I think one of them, I have to go for wellness. I think that, that's one of the things that I always go for as soon as I start a new sort of RPG is go to wellness to um, increase our maximum health. So yeah, you get a point. Nice. And then we unlock the ability to take rank two after healing 200 damage. Okay, so we'll pretty much passively unlock that, I guess. Second point, do I want to hang on to it or do I want to sink it into something? I can't turn it down. <laughs> the curiosity's got the better of me. And we did get a boost pack as a little gift with our Constellation Welcome Pack, didn't we? I think I've got to take boost training, haven't I? Level 1 allows you to use them. 
Level two, using a boost pack expends less fuel. Boost pack fuel regenerates more quickly, doubles the previous bonuses. Nice. Rocket man, here we come. Awesome. And to get access to the next level, I need to boost jump 10 times while in combat. Okay. I mean, I need to have, work out how to do the actual boost jump first, but nice. All right, I'll take that. So let's bed down for the night and then set off on our first constellation job, I guess. So let's, oh, <laughs> here we go, the time challenge again. So one local hour here on Jemison is two hours and five minutes UT, whatever that is. Universal time? I can only imagine that's universal time. So let's see, let's sleep through till, let's go for 11, 13. So let's go for nine hours. That should take us just after 8 a.m. Uh, there we go. Blimey, the sleeping malarkey takes a long while, doesn't it? Oh, that really crawls. <laughs> Okay, as soon as there's a mod available to make this faster, I'm in. You awaken feeling well rested. Marvellous. Glad to hear. Okay. Uh, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Let's head on down the stairs then. So, we're going to see Sarah. Looks like she's already downstairs. Oh, she's outside. Maybe she's got the eggs and bakey. Morning, Vasco. Aha. Uh -huh. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, what is it? Ready to get out there? Ready as I'll ever be, I guess. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. Oh, okay. So potentially a lead on one of the artifacts. Um, so, yeah, it, it, they're relatively inert once they're dug up. So, again, I, I'm just curious to know about what happens when one of these are found. And if there are several already out there in people's possession as opposed to being still buried underground how many people have had the same visions as myself and Barrett? assuming that they're the same visions i did wonder as well maybe maybe there's like a series of visions that have to be pieced together anyway um uc vanguard i think i've heard of that is that like the the uc military a volunteer force that helps defend the edges of united colonies space ah. they're always looking for recruits Lots of retired veterans and dangerous professionals mixed in with part-timers who barely have a laser cannon welded to a hull. My contact is in the recruiting office, so he hears a lot about what the volunteers are up to. Sounds like an unstable mix of experience there, but okay. I mean, whatever works, I guess. So, yeah, th this is what I mean. Other people out there have artifacts. Other people potentially have had the visions. We have to assume that we're not the only ones to have stumbled into this mystery. But most people aren't going into space looking for the unknown. They're looking for places to settle, resources to extract, territory to defend. An odd-looking rock or a single strange hunk of metal wouldn't mean much to them. That's why Constellation exists, in a way. To put pieces like this together. Okay. So, um... Your contact is within the UC Vanguard. Okay. I am excited to go on my first Constellation mission, but at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of interested to learn a bit more about the UC and what they're up to. Jumping to anthropology on me already. Oh, well, good. We all need our own reasons to be out there. Hmm. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Okay. Sarah will be locked as your follower if you continue. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, you and me till we get the artifact. That's some things I need to do. What do I get out of this anyway? Consolation have a salary. Um, 
I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. This is, <laughs> I've said it before, this is Asher's jam right here. So, no, more than happy to get involved. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen, whatever you were before or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every hmm. member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? Okay, so... So long as it doesn't bring any trouble to your door, you'll look the other way. Hmm. Um, yeah, you don't care if I steal as long as I don't get caught. I'm not. I'm not about to start crawling through, uh, crawling through places in the dead of night, pilfering things from under people's noses. But yeah, it, it does sound as though that's leaving Constellation open to trouble. Those are the rules. Advance humanity's knowledge to the best of your ability. As long as you do that. I'm not here to judge you. Now, let's you and I get over to Mast. Okay, that's fair. Sarah Morgan can't be dismissed until uh, the old neighbourhood is complete. Okay, that's fair, I guess. Um, Vasco, are you coming with us? I am at your service, Captain. <laughs> okay, um... Not going to ask why your hand can spin like that, but fine. Um, Vasco. Captain. Hi. Now that you are a member of Constellation, I am at your service. No additional protocols necessary. Also, given the likelihood that you will be out in unsettled space, it might be beneficial to go over exploration outpost development. Ooh. In case you ever need to build a base for field research. That would be handy. Start an outpost on a planet. Cool. So, yeah, I, I will get to that eventually. I'm kind of tied up at the moment with Sarah, but um, just... I don't think that appeared before, that stuff on the right, that information about Vasco's... I take it these are skills that can be used whilst on a ship? Because I know that crew members that you hire have or that join you from Constellation have certain abilities and certain skills that kind of contribute to your own when you're all on the ship together. So those must be Vasco's, I guess. So air, uh, a, a Neutronic Fusion, whatever that is, level one, Shield Systems level two, and EM Electromagnetic Weapon Systems one. I will continue to await your further input, Captain. Well, thanks, Vasco. That's awfully good of you. Okay, so... Yeah, tell me more about outpost development. The exploration of an unknown planet can be a major undertaking. By building an outpost, you will be able to construct scanning equipment, resource extractors, and defenses. It is even possible to set up multiple outposts capable of manufacturing, allowing you to build advanced equipment. Ah... I hadn't even considered that before. Yeah, I could set up a string of manufacturing outposts. Nice. Um, Yeah, what sort of advanced structures can be built? The scan booster is the most obvious, as it will enable you to detect landmarks and other points of interest from further away. Beyond that, extractors will allow you to collect raw materials of various types, while fabricators enable the manufacturing. A particularly prosperous outpost may even warrant the construction of cargo links, Ooh. allowing you to share resources between other outposts you have built. Oh, that's handy, so you can pull resources. Um, yeah, how do I know if a planet has the resources? I think this, I think this is probably through an orbital scan. A planetary scan mm. will reveal the presence of key inorganic resources, although rarer elements will be harder to find without training. And while a scan may detect the presence of life on a planet, you will have to analyze the native plants and animals yourself to know what compounds they produce. Okay, that's fair. Um, nice. Yeah, I'll give that a try next time I touch down on a, uh, a, a random barren rock. The blueprints you need to construct an outpost should already be on your watch. It will automatically connect to any available materials for construction. 
in your ship's cargo. Nice. Um, <laughs> unusual question to ask a robot, but do you miss Barrett? My primary function has been to support and protect Barrett during his travels. I am currently unable to do so. That is as capable as I can be of missing anyone. <laughs> I believe Barrett would find your question amusing. Hmm. Um, now your job is to support and protect me. Uh, yeah, it must have been... You must have had your hands full trying to keep Barrett out of trouble. Barrett has, thus far, survived every mission on which we have embarked. It is therefore evident that my efforts have been successful. I <laughs> suspect that Barrett would disagree with how necessary my intervention has been in any given situation. <laughs> so, how long have you been part of Constellation? I arrived along with many material goods purchased by the group's previous chair, Malcolm Livingstone. Despite ah. several significant system replacements and upgrades, I have been online for 43 years. So Livingston was the previous chair? I thought Chloe Bow was. I, hmm, okay, I'm getting my uh, timeline confused by the sounds of it. Um, yeah, I could use your my crew if you could. I don't know whether I can... Can I even take more than one companion at a time? Captain Asher, I will proceed to my assigned post. Oh, okay. Manage your crew. Review and change their assignments between your ships and outposts. Different crew have different skills which enhance your ship or outposts. Okay. So, so I could send Vasco to the frontier. Uh, let me just cancel this for a moment. So... Right, so they're both unassigned. Sarah Morgan and Vasco are unassigned. Sarah's following me, though. So, okay. Um, her skills as well. Level four aerodynamics. Well, that makes sense because she was she's ex she's ex UC military, I think. Um, which would make sense that she was sort of uh, she's got piloting skills and laser skills, leadership, botany. Okay, and then those ones for Vasco. Let's just hold off for a moment. Um, Vasco, I uh. I'd love for you to come with us. If not, failing that, can I have all my crap, please? Because I could really do with going and selling it all. I have been idle here for a long time. I believe Barrett would describe this state as bored. <laughs> uh, I do like Barrett, but I, I can quite imagine him being a bit of a big child at times. Um, we will assign you somewhere very soon, but first of all, could I just take all my crap off your hands i will happily carry whatever you need uh no the opposite is true actually right let's just take everything there get myself thoroughly over encumbered again uh do i do you mind if i ask you some personal questions if you feel it is necessary oh these are new ones okay i didn't know if this was the same thing again um right yeah what's your read on barrett it is impossible to read Barrett. He is neither a book nor a <laughs> block of code. If you are asking for a summary of my observations on his behavior, I will provide one. Yes. If you if you could, please. Uh, did Barrett make you? No, we, we, we know that he didn't, but it'd be interesting to hear more about Vasco's background. No. I was manufactured by a machine. However, Barrett has modified my programming substantially. I have advanced linguistic capability and navigational skills. I warned him that I would require an extra millisecond to process information with his modifications. <laughs> but he did not seem to mind. Apparently, my capacity for conversation makes me a more entertaining travel companion. Hmm. Um, yeah, any idea what his background is? Barrett has not shared many personal details with me. He finds me a poor conversation partner. <laughs> Despite repeated attempts on his part, I do not understand the concept of gossip. <laughs> Yeah, you don't ask a robot for gossip. That that makes sense. 
Um, yeah, have you two been traveling buddies for long? My internal clock tells me that it has been years since Barrett and I began traveling together. I have traveled much of the settled systems in his company. Okay, he does seem like quite the character. Based on my understanding of Barrett, I believe he would be flattered by that assessment. <laughs> um, yeah, tell me a bit more about yourself. I will answer your questions truthfully. Unlike you, I am incapable of lying. <laughs> that had a, a, a somewhat menacing undertone. Uh, so, yeah, how did you come to be part of this organization? Constellation recovered me from an abandoned lunar robotics factory on Earth's moon, oh. where I was manufactured. I am told I was in quite a state of disrepair. Barrett elected to refurbish me after the discovery. Since then, I have been reprogrammed to be useful to Constellation. I thought Livingstone's journal said that He'd found Vasco in a, in a market in Aquila City. Maybe I misread that. Um, so you were built on Earth's moon? That is correct. I am a first generation Model A robot. As such, I was manufactured on Earth's moon. Modern lunar robotics products are manufactured elsewhere. Hmm, okay. Um, do you remember anything from before your reprogramming? Some data from my time on Earth's moon remains deep in my motherboard, but I do not frequently access it. Very little of what is in those files would prove useful to modern spacefarers. I suppose that makes sense from a robot's point of view. Why bother digging in into your, your oldest files if they're not directly relevant to any task at hand. Um, yeah, where did the name Vasco come from? Constellation named me after the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama, who resided on Earth in the 15th century AD. Hmm. He explored his home planet by way of its seas. Barrett tells me he was quite an accomplished explorer. I am inclined to believe it as that is a compliment Barrett normally reserves for himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they were able to fix you up. Constellation is an exceptionally driven and intelligent group of humans. I would expect nothing less of them. I am powered by wheels and cogs. They are responsible for any ticking that emanates from me. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't... <laughs> Bless. I wasn't directly querying any ticking noises coming from your chassis. Don't worry about it. Um, do you enjoy working here? That is a difficult question to parse. I do not experience human emotions such as enjoyment. However, I have been kept busy since Constellation acquired me. That satisfies my directive to be as helpful as possible for the duration of my existence. Just realize if he's been online for 40 odd years under the uh, under the possession of Constellation, he must have seen a fair few members come and go. Hmm. Uh, do you miss the lodge while we're traveling? Unusual question. In a geographical sense, the lodge cannot be missed. <laughs> it is easily accessible from the new Atlantis spaceport, but I presume that you are using miss in this context to mean long for, in which case my answer is no, I long for nothing. Barrett, however, regularly complains about missing the lodge's amenities during our travels. <laughs> this has led me to the conclusion that it is a place worth missing. Okay, logical. Um... I'm missing enough of both of us. Well, I, I mean, I've only just arrived just last night, but I can see that this is this is a nice place to be hanging around. Sentimentality isn't my style. <laughs> Sometimes I wish you didn't take this question so literally. Yeah, that does sound like something Barrett would say. 
It would seem that spending an extended period of time in Barrett's company has resulted in an improved ability to calculate his speech patterns. Perhaps someday I will also be capable of emulating yours. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Um, how much do you know about us squishy human beings? Constellation has seen to it that I possess a near encyclopedic knowledge of human history, art, culture, and science. May I answer a question for you? I'd love for you to tell me what the hell happened to Earth. <laughs> I'm really intrigued. Um... Ah, oh, it's not an option. Why, why, why can I not ask anyone about Earth? Um... Yeah, can you speak multiple languages? In fact, multiple la it, are multiple languages even still in use? I have been programmed to comprehend all modern and ancient human languages. The only exception is body language. My body is crafted from reinforced metal <laughs> and therefore incompatible with such forms of expression. Hmm. Um, do you know any human jokes? I am looking at one. <laughs> I hope that was a suitable response. Constellation did not equip me with a sense of humor. I have done my best to mimic Barrett. <laughs> I was going to say, you picked that up from Barrett, didn't you? <laughs> wow, I've been, I've been roasted by a lunar robot. Thanks for that, Vasco. Um, do, do you know any more? I am looking at one. Oh. I hope that was a suit. Oh, I'd hope that... <laughs> I hope he might be able to tell a few different ones, but okay. So, um, what was the greatest invention in human history, in your humble opinion? Logically, I believe the correct answer to be the airplane, followed shortly by the computer. That's fair. Humans could not have become a spacefaring species without them. Illogically speaking, I am inclined to believe that books were your greatest invention. I have spent a good deal of time processing works of science fiction. They make good case studies in how your species could have made a mess of its entry into the stars in different ways than you did in reality. <laughs> um, what about human music? This is a difficult question to parse. I do not experience enjoyment. However, I find that the music of ancient Japan has a pleasantly mathematical sound. Hmm. The same is true of the works of European composers from the Baroque period. I have dedicated significant time to processing these compositions and understanding their structure. Oh, a robot with a taste in music. Uh, let me ask you about something else. You are an exceptionally curious human. <laughs> Uh, Understood. Let's see. Can you tell me a little bit more about your makers? Lunar Robotics is a manufacturing company. They are most notable for creating Model A robots. Their headquarters was once located on Earth's moon. It was evacuated during the cataclysm that rendered Earth uninhabitable. Today, Lunar Robotics products are still found throughout the settled systems, myself included. Hmm. So I might encounter a few more of you. Okay. Um, how does travelling with me compare to travelling with Barrett? I find you to be a more measured and logical captain than Thanks. Barrett. It would be quite difficult for another human to be more reckless than him. <laughs> My likelihood of expiration due to corporeal destruction has been significantly reduced since coming aboard your ship. <laughs> you should consider this a success. I do. I'm making a note here. Huge success. Um, okay, I think that's it for the questions. I hope my answers were satisfactory. Absolutely. Uh, right, let's do the whole Captain, assignment thing. I believe your ship will perform more efficiently if you bring me on board. I am inclined to agree, Vasco. I will go wherever I am needed. Yeah, we'll get you assigned to the ship. Nice. 
Uh, cool. So you'll, you'll what? Make your way there? Okay. Uh, right, Sarah, let's go. Hey, will you follow? You will. Excellent. Right. We'll get ourselves back to the frontier. I want to try and find that trade terminal that the um, the shipmaster guy mentioned because I, I really need to drop off some crab. Um, let's head that away. Right. Let me see now. All right, talk to Sarah's contact. Oh, yes, we need to stop off at the mast. The mast station, is it? Mast HQ? I still need to find out what mast actually stands for. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Look at this place, though. This is going to... This is huge. This is going to take so long to explore. Oh, my God. Hello. Morning. Don's Roost has the best food in the settled systems. Okay, I'll bear it in mind. If I need the best food in the settled systems, I know where to go. Here it is, Mast HQ. And to uphold the values of the Vanguard, honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as members of the United Colonies Navy. I, I do. do. Then I'm proud to welcome you to the Vanguard. Now, you all have your assignments. Get out there and show them what the UC's made of. Supra et Ultra. Supra et Ultra. Mm. Okay, so the Vanguard are... What did Sarah say? A, a civilian force? Was it anybody with a ship can basically sign up? I did notice as well, over there, we've got the... Oh, there's a zoom, isn't there? Did I read on the skills page there was a zoom? There it is, up and down on the D-pad. Cool. So just one level of zoom, I, I take it extra levels gives us more. But yeah, that's a Freestyle Collective embassy over there, so... I'd like to pay attention to... Uh, pay a visit to that at some point. Right. Sarah. Hello, should we go in? You've got a contact in here, I understand. Okay, this is the mast lobby, but again, I'd love to know what mast actually is. Hi. Welcome to mast. If you have an appointment, you may proceed inside. If you don't have official business, we ask you remain in the lobby. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, what exactly is this place? This? This is mast, the beating heart of the United Colonies. Every decision made in the civilized galaxy takes place inside these walls. Ah, so this is the seat of UC power. I still want to know what MAST stands for, but at least I know what it is. Um, uh, what's your role? I'm one of MAST's resource officers. It's my job to ensure those here on official business get where they're going promptly. And that any rule breaking is dealt with swiftly. Okay. <laughs> All right. In taken. Uh, no, I'm certainly not looking for work with the UC. Thank you. Stay safe. Right. That, apparently, is Sarah's contact, John Twala. Sarah, good to see you. Who's your friend? Hopefully Constellation's newest member. Thought I'd run through some legwork together. Oh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? No. Help the United Colonies earn some credits? No. You even get your UC citizenship? Absolutely not, but thanks. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, rather chart stars than fight wars, that's fair enough. Um, right, tell me, I'm not joining, but tell me a bit more about the Vanguard. United Colonies volunteer fleet. Independent captains enlist, get to use their own ships, and the UC provides them with sustained work and credits. Okay. And put in your time, and you're guaranteed UC citizenship and everything that comes with it. Discounts on UC goods and medical services. Chance to own a place in New Atlantis. Only way a foreign captain could even dream of seeing those sorts of benefits. So, you want in? No. <laughs> Thought I made that perfectly clear. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's move on from this. We've got Constellation business, thanks. All right, all right. Can't blame me for trying, right? I mean... I still haven't given up on getting Sarah to re-enlist. 
Hmm. It's a game we play. He asks. I say no. Here's what I got for you two. Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you oh. know. The Sol system? Which Admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Matches that description Sarah gave me. Hmm, fancy metal ornament, eh? Okay. Um, I make him a good offer for it. Scientific discovery being used as an ornament. The indignity. <laughs> the bare-faced gall of it all. He's on patrol. He could be putting our item at risk. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what's, what's so bad about the soul system? You kidding? Lowest posting request rate in the whole fleet. Only thing there the UC cares about is Mars. And no one wants to go to Mars. They want to get off Mars. Hmm. Um, and this Moara, you said he's one of the Vanguard civilian volunteers? Oh, he goes way back. I think he was recruit number 81 or something. Oh, wow. Real old hand. Okay. But yeah, if he's out on patrol in the soul system with one of these artifacts in his hold, then yeah, he could be jumped. What? <laughs> nah. Soul system is as quiet as a coffin. It'll be fine. Hmm. That means it's not going to be fine. Yeah. I'm sure you two can handle it. Soul system is a lot of planets, but a vet like Moera will be checking in at Sidonia on the regular. You mean hitting the bars, don't you, John? <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with a little refresh between patrols. Hmm, okay. Um, so, yeah, what can you tell me about Sidonia? Yeah, bring a coloring book. You get so used to seeing red, you'll forget what blues and greens look like. Hmm. And did Mawara mention where he'd acquired this artifact? You'll have to ask him. But Vanguard volunteers have retrieval rights if they get into a scrap. Uh, Wouldn't be surprised if he found it off of a pirate or something like that. Okay, that makes sense. Um, a bar in a spaceport. <laughs> Sounds like home. Um... It's definitely a lifestyle, burning helium out there, seeing where the stars take you. I'm serious about that recruitment offer, by the way. You just come talk to me when you're ready. You see is a good friend to have. No. Uh, absolutely not. But nice speaking to you, but definitely no. Um, right, so we need to ask about Mawara in Sidonia. And we have the option to speak to Commander Tuala about joining the Vanguard, which just isn't going to happen. Been a long time since I've been to Mars. Soul system doesn't get a lot of traffic. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, I suppose we could take the opportunity to ask Sarah some questions. Ask whatever you'd like. Let's see. Uh, okay, so well, let's get the formalities out of the way. What would you consider to be your area of expertise? You mean apart from being the chair of Constellation for the past five years? Other than that, yeah. Well, let's see. I pride myself with my aptitude for astrodynamics, calculating optimal trajectories for grav jumping. That's been quite useful in the past. <laughs> and as far as planetary exploration, my area of expertise is botany. <laughs> so don't worry, I won't let you eat anything that might put you in the hospital. <laughs> okay, reassuring, I, I think. Um, yeah, what do you uh, get up to in your spare time? Exploration is my entire life. I consider it both a career and recreation. That being said, I will make a confession. Oh. But you have to promise to keep it between us. Pinky promise. Before I graduated from school, I was in a band. And no, <laughs> I don't mean the school band. I mean a rock band. <laughs> we called ourselves Ironic Comet. <laughs> a ridiculous name, I know. But uh, we were just a bunch of teenagers getting together and having fun. And okay. before you ask, no, I wasn't the lead singer. I actually played the drums. The band never really went anywhere, of course, but those were good times, and I remember them fondly. Nothing wrong with that. Ironic Comet. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. 
Do you have any religious beliefs? This seems like a bit of a forward question, but I I do know that there are two main religions, two main churches in this game, I believe. One is, uh, what are they called? Is it the Enlightened? And then there's another one that, that goes the other way. I can't remember what they're called. My parents considered themselves to be enlightened, but their lives were so busy they rarely pursued their beliefs. By the time I was old enough to start questioning these things, the idea of following any organized religion was almost an afterthought. It's not that I don't want to believe in anything, it's that my scientific mind is often at odds with my spiritual center. Having been out there, in the starfield, seeing all those magnificent wonders with my own eyes, I need answers, not religious theory. That's fair. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. No, Don't no. Don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. Um, funnily enough, that's one of the reasons that I asked. Um, Asher has no sort of religious leaning uh, to speak of, but knowing that there are at least two different religious tracks within the universe of Starfield, you know, it sounds to reason that we probably have to uh, sort of interact with people of either side. So, yeah, just gaining a bit more of a knowledge is uh, is what I'm after at the moment. Um, there was, there is also the House Varun, which I understand is a bit of an extreme quasi-religious sort of branch of itself, but anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. Certainly. I always enjoy our little chats. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Let's head out. So, we are heading for. Yeah, we're heading back to the land. Wait, that is. That's the lodge. That's the residential district. What's that? Wait, what is that? Unknown. There's something a kilometre in that direction. Okay, anyway, um, let's head... Oh, of course we need to head back to the... Uh, we need to head back to the Nat, don't we? Catch the train back to the port. Right, let's go take care of that. Oh, and of course I've got to watch my O2 bar as well, haven't I? Even walking a little bit too briskly is getting me completely out of sorts. We, Sarah, we, we need to visit... Do keep up. <laughs> I'm the one that's weighed down with crap here. We need to visit a kiosk. I need to get rid of all this rubbish. <sighs> okay. Um, in fact, while I'm here, is there anything else of interest in this this station? Mast Nat Station. Oh, is this the elevator that was behind the reception? Choose floor. Cabinet chambers. Yeah, lobby commander Twala's office. We could have just taken the elevator behind reception. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Looks like there's also a set of doors at this end of the station as well. Where does this take us? Oh, is this a... This is like a freight elevator. Okay. And that takes us... Oh, to the well. Okay. A small gathering of Sanctum Universal faithful listened to hear their founder, but some passerbys expressed frustration. Keeper Aquilus. One person said, do I have to be subjected to universal propaganda? <laughs> but this view may be in the minority. All right. Enough of this. Let's get back over to the... Get over to the spaceport. Oh, um... <laughs> uh... I, I didn't mean to leave her there. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Hopefully she can, she can just catch the next one along. I've flown across most of the settled systems in all manners of spacecraft. And yet, I still get sick on the gnat. <laughs> nice, now you tell me. Thanks for that. Right. Now, I'm just trying to cast my mind back, because there is a kiosk somewhere, isn't there? Um, that I need to... Uh, 
Then I need to keep oh, an eye open for. That statue. It's beautiful, isn't it? By Vectera, mm. by Vectera, the by Vectera. Oh God! <laughs> I can't believe it. Is it you? Is it really, really oh. you? <laughs> I forgot about him. Captain of the frontier, bane of the fleet, constellations shining, star of stars. Uh. Hi. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that, those are certainly a lot of words. Um, <laughs> get away from me, you weirdo. Um, Bane of the Fleet. Oh, don't be so modest. It was all over SSNN. Lone Miner tames the Crimson Fleet, saves a member of Constellation, and steals the hearts of millions, no, trillions. <laughs> And now you're standing here next to me. Oh, it really is you, right? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I I did only just. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it, it's me. Then the day is truly blessed, because for a moment I wasn't sure if you were real or just another hallucination. Another. But now that I know it's you, what are the odds? And to think, I almost went for coffee instead. Uh -huh. But I changed my routine for one day, and here you are. It's almost like it was meant to be. Uh, e yeah, maybe tone it down a tad. Um... <laughs> it's definitely not. Yeah, it. I was just minding my own business on the way to my ship, and you appeared. Me too. I was minding your business as well. <laughs> Visualizing it, dreaming it, and tending to it like a garden in bloom. And now, here it is. Our first spring. Uh -huh. Either way, it's such an honor to meet you. Hey, do you mind if I follow you around? Do you need a sidekick? Um... What am I saying? You're a hero! Of course you do! Lead the way! Uh, sidekick? Assigning the adoring fan to your crew will make him essential until unassigned. Okay. <laughs> um... Welcome aboard. Hold on, I don't agree to this. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're going to be my sidekick, don't you need a sidekick costume? Good point. I'll start working on it right away, as soon as I learn how to sew. <laughs> Until then, maybe I can be a sidekick in training. Do you have an academy where fans can practice groveling at your feet? I uh, never got around to setting not, that up, no. I can start one. Goody. <laughs> Somebody please teach this guy how to sew, because I would love to see the costume he comes up with. <laughs> oh my god, am oh I going to regret this? Welcome aboard. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> I sincerely hope not. Um, okay, so we can assign the adoring fan to the frontier. Ah, now. We've already got... We've already got Vasco assigned to the frontier. Um, if we take the adoring fan, is that going to mess things up when Sarah comes aboard as well? I guess I can just cross that bridge when it comes to it. So, what does the adoring fan have? Scavenging one, concealment one. <laughs> that, that's ironic. Hold on. The adoring fan who never shuts up has a, a level in concealment. Okay. Um, and weightlifting two. That's handy. Um, right, I'll... See you later then, I guess. What what happens now? Does he just make his way to the ship? Um. <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave him to his own devices. Let, let, let's just walk quickly away. <laughs> leave him to it. So, as I was saying... Oh, yes, and Sarah, very nice monument, I must say. Um, before we were rudely interrupted, I was saying to myself that the, the shipmaster over on the landing pad was mentioning there was some sort of trade booth um, near the ramp. Well, I mean, this is the ramp. Oh, Sergeant God. Hume is looking for reliable people to help. Security them. scanners, chemical snipers. Hmm. The United Colonies sure isn't taking any chances. 
Hmm. What's he saying about Sergeant Yumi? I think that was recruiting again. I'm not interested in working for the UC. Um, look how cool the ship looks up there, though. That's... Ooh. <laughs> I think this might be one of the little bots that we can research for outposts. Oh, I want one. <laughs> I want one. Um, right, what's occurring here? A diplomatic visa? You got to be kidding me. Invoice haven't needed diplomatic visas since the colony war. The law's the law, sir. And Are you freestyle by any chance? New Atlanta Security Charter 2308 Addendum Article 2, Section 8. Ludicrous. You made all that up. There is no such addendum. The war ended almost 20 years ago. I am Representative Evans Chisholm of the Freestyle Collective. Uh -huh. I've been coming here for months trying to ensure continued peace. I don't make up the laws, Representative. I just enforce them. You have a good day now. Someplace else. Hmm. How are you today? Um, I was fine until I saw this mess over here. So, sounds like this is one of our guys. What? Can't you see I'm, I'm dealing with something? Uh, yeah. Typical UC tyranny. What was that all about? Guards seem to have issues with you. Are you all right? Yeah. Um, fellow Freestar Collective here. Oh, sorry, friend. I didn't realize you were one of us. Thanks for your concern. No problem. But yeah, it looks like I'm stuck. The girl of this meant to ask me for a diplomatic visa. You know we haven't needed to show one of these since we kicked their asses in the colony war. <laughs> um, do you know anyone that can help? I can talk to them. Yeah, this this isn't acceptable. Uh, speaking of anyone that can help, I have been meaning to go over to the embassy. Maybe I can pop a visit over there. Yeah, they're clearly singling you out. No, it's not. It's mighty kind of you to offer. But look, he knew I was a political envoy before I even landed. But you, you clearly are not going to get the same harassment I did. If you could go to the Freestar Collective Embassy and uh -huh. talk to one of the diplomats, I'm sure they could clear this up. Please, take these credits. I insist. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you. What are you staring at? Can I help you? Um, the addendum, diplomatic visa. Yeah, what's your issue with this guy? Oh, you heard that? Like I said, he needs a diplomatic visa to enter the city. Not my fault he doesn't know the law. Ignorance is no excuse, you know? Hmm. Got a feeling he's not the one in the wrong here. Yeah, let's be honest, you could have let him in. I mean, yeah, sure, I could have. And I could say you assaulted me. Because that's what having power is. Now why don't you go take a walk? Oh, I will take a walk. <laughs> right past you and straight to the embassy. Um, Sarah, quick diversion. Got an errand to run. Uh, well, I've got an errand to briskly walk. <laughs> you will be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep moving. <clears throat> okay, so Freestyle Embassy is off to the left, as well as House Varun and I'm interested in this Armistice Archive, which is apparently dead ahead, but Okay, ooh, I do want to pay a visit to this as well. I saw this flame from afar. I'm pretty sure I've seen this thing on one of the early trailers for the game. Um, why does this robot have such a big nose? <laughs> Memorial to those lost during the Colony War. Yeah. I wonder which side of the Colony War. Um, is that? Let's see if I can read this inscription. In memory of the brave service members of the United Colonies. Yeah, I thought it would just be one-sided. Who gave their lives in the Colony War. These 30 represent the more than 30,000 who fought and died for freedom honor and order jesus 30000 refrain from engaging in any criminal activity 
I am programmed for combat. Okay. Great. Yeah, you look at you look like it as well. Are they those little mini guns? Like mini mini guns on your arms? Quiet is requested while on memorial grounds. Uh okay. I'm I'm just gonna move along now. Um What's that? Af Aphelian Realty. Okay, so that must be real estate. Got it. Hmm. So, yeah, the uh, the Freestyle Collective Embassy over here. I know that the... the, the... See that scientist out in front of Mast? Staring at trees. Sounds upset. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad, right? Scientist staring at trees? Oh my god, <laughs> she's staring at me. Are you okay? <laughs> she has seen things. Kind of busy right now. Um, what, trying to dry out your eyeballs? Okay, <laughs> you crack on. Good god. Um, what is that building? Okay, I wonder if that's one of the Maybe two we churches. Stop for a moment at the memorial. You know, to pay our respects. The... Which, that one back there, or or is this a memorial? This is just a statue, isn't it? Hmm. Um, right. Hello. Evie Martinez, why are you named? Never forget what the FC did. Never forget. Oh, God. What did I walk into here? Um, what's, what's your problem with the collective? What's my problem with them? Really? I'm keeping the FC accountable for the terrible things they've done. Like... The colony war was an unforgivable tragedy. Uh... Countless <laughs> lives could have been spared, but the Freestar Collective was out for blood. The Freestar Collective took my father away from me. And the United Colonies took my parents away from me, who, incidentally, started the entire war. Yeah, here we go. The United Colonies drew first blood at the Siege of Vesta. It's their fault. You've got it completely backwards. Unbelievable. You're just like the rest of them. You refuse to take any responsibility. How can you live with yourselves? What? I'm sick of the FC's lies. How are the people of the UC supposed to get any closure? How am I going to get any justice for what happened to my father? I'm done talking to you. Get away from me. Gladly. <laughs> well... I want it torn down, of course. Tear down the embassy. The there's even an embassy for them here. After what they did, it's infuriating. Tear it down. Tear it all down. I'd much rather tear the UC down, thank you. Diplomacy is needed to make sure another colony war won't happen. The embassy has... Yeah, the embassy has every right to be here. You're being <laughs> ludicrous. Ridiculous? For what? Voicing my opinion? You sound like a typical Freestar snake. Leave me alone. Good. Now stay away. <laughs> you, you better hope I do stay away. Next time I'm coming with a shotgun. Absolute raving lunatic. Is this what the UC colonists are being fed? I mean, it was only... What? Just over 20 years ago that this happened? How can people be so blind already? Hard to believe it's been two decades since we were at war with the Collective, when it seems like only yesterday. Interesting choice of words, Sarah, since we were at war. Oh, of course, she comes from UC Colony, uh, uh, military, doesn't she? Mm. Be interesting to uh, press her for some more views on her opinion of the Colony War, because that sounded like it was coming from a UC point of view, which could lead to uh, a misunderstanding. Anyway, we're here at the embassy now. Friendly territory. Hiya. Um, yeah, th there's trouble over at the spaceport. Welcome to the Freestar Embassy. Is there something I can help you with? Yeah, uh, Representative Chisholm is being held at the spaceport by UC security. Ah, uh, typical UC security. They try to bully us every chance they get and still manage to play the victim. I'll get this squared away with the folks down at the spaceport. Thanks for letting us know. No problem. You are welcome. Oh, that was... Well, that was um, surprisingly easy. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll have our people go and fetch the representative. Hmm, okay. I, I guess I'll just leave then. <laughs> um, 
I get the impression I might be back here again before too long, but for now, come on, Sarah, let's just head back to the spaceport. You stay well out of my way. Ooh, keep her a pilot. If someone insults you, you want to just beat the shit out of them sometimes. <laughs> but you don't. Well, not quite what I was thinking, but that's actually a great example, Marcus. The man in the story was cruel. Do you know why he was cruel? You must feel what he feels. Understand his pain. Accept it. And deliver it not back upon you. Empathy. You mean empathy. But you say it like it's easy. Like anyone can... Just... Love a terrible person who has been terrible to them. Yeah. Why even bother? I mean, isn't the cycle of humanity peace and war back and forth, like forever? Seems kind of pointless to try so hard for something that won't last. Nothing ever really changes. Well, it's not easy, no. But necessary. Because you see, everything has changed. God has given us the intelligence, the ingenuity to reach into the stars, to travel his path. To truly find him. But we can't do it alone. The only way is through... Unity. Ah, yes, Andreas. Yes. Unity. Hmm. Well, I'm sure you all have other things to do. Now, this Keeper Aquilus... Taking the time to stop and I'm sure he was just mentioned on that news terminal in the station. Me a lot to think about. Um, hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what, so, sorry, what was that all about? Okay, hello. Uh, <laughs> man, a few words. Even just the sound of his voice is comforting, I guess. And he seems like a popular guy. I had this graph jump once, and I don't know, I felt something. <laughs> Thought I was crazy at first. Hmm. I'd like to speak to this Aquinas. I want to, like I say, I just want to very quickly try and get a bearing on these these churches that are operating here in uh, in New Atlantis. Ah, this is the Sanctum Universum. Okay. So Sanctum Universum and the Enlightened, they're the two churches, I guess. Um. All right. Maybe I won't pop in just yet. Let's get over to the spaceport. I'd, I'd, I'd really like to properly explore New Atlantis when I can. Try to get to the, uh, try to get to the major sites. It's a shame House Varun abandoned their embassy. Oh. I bet we could have learned a lot from one another. This is, oh, this is House Varun's embassy? Hello. Not sure if those Varun zealots live in space or got separated from their home planet or what, but they scavenge what they need. Lots of old facilities left over from the colony war, and they like to pick them clean. Hmm. Is the is the door actually still like active? Oh, it is. <laughs> um. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to see if I can pay a visit to that embassy when I can. There's lots of cameras there, though, by the looks of it. Hmm. Maybe a little nighttime excursion to the old embassy might be uh, might be called for. But yeah, I'd like to have a proper poke around here. Galbank. Good grief, Galbank HQ. By the looks of it, there's something over there. Ryujin. Okay. I think they... Aren't, I think they're based in Neon on Voli. Job application. About us. 
our mission statement, to deliver the best quality life-improving technology today before you need it tomorrow. Ryujin Industries has been a leader in technology since its creation. We strive toward advancement and believe there is always room for improvement. Fulfilling customer desire is our number one goal. Okay, what about your history? Ryujin Industries was founded by Ray De Keris and Itaro Saito in 2307. Oh, it's a fairly new company then. It's only been around about 23 years. Around the time of the Colony War, weirdly enough, Dicaris had a dream of applying her vast knowledge as a biotech engineer to the improvement of everyday life, and when she met the business-minded Itaru Saito, it wasn't long until Ryujin Industries was formed. Ryujin's first product was based on Dicaris' neurological research and would prove to be a major breakthrough in technology, the NeuroAmp. NeuroAmps would propel Ryujin to the top of the tech industry and solidify their position as a major contender for years to come. It wasn't long before Ryujin Industries began to look to other major forays into the tech world. In 2310, Taiyo Astroneering Astroneer formed the Fold, uh, joined the Fold, and continues to be a leader in spacecraft engineering and design today. So Taiyo were, what, bought by Ryujin? With a growing business, Dakaris and Saito worked with Benjamin Bayou to build the massive Ryujin Tower. The incredible effort would showcase the strong relationship between Ryujin Industries and the City of Neon. Yes, that's what I thought. Ryujin Industries adding to Neon's prestige as something more than just a pleasure city, and Neon being an attractive bonus to working at Ryujin, <laughs> because it's a pleasure city. Over time, Ryujin Industries would also incorporate Arboron, Drone, and Tranquility into their family. These subsidiaries would further strengthen Ryujin as a formidable competitor and expand their reach into different aspects of life. Tranquility, okay, literally a tea company? Today, Ryujin continues to be an industry leader with eyes always pointed toward the future. Neuroamps. Millions of people benefit from our neuroamps every day. Neuroamps are designed to improve overall brain function in order to, oh wait, hold on, are they the injectors? Have I got a few of those? In order to boost your quality of life, they've been used in medical monitoring, neurological healing, as well as mental stabilizers to help with sleep, anxiety, and social skills. The first NeuroAmp was created by Ray DeCaries, a biotech engineer who specialized in neurological designs. DeCaries was determined to harness the power of the mind to improve aspects of everyday life. While initially only approved for military use, NeuroAmps became a public commodity in 2315 and continue to be Ryogen's primary product today. Okay, in the news. See the latest news at Ryogen Industries. As the leading technology corporation in the settled systems, we love to keep our customers up to date. All articles written by Ryogen, Ryogen Industries Marketing Department. Celebrating 20 years. Ryogen Industries and Taiyo Astroneering celebrated their 20th anniversary this year. Back in 2310, Simon Tayo, the son of Tayo Astroneering's founder, signed a deal with Ryogen Industries to become their first official subsidiary. The two companies have since celebrated incredible innovations in spacecraft engineering. So that's presumably another competitor to um, Walter... Oh, what's Walter's company name? <laughs> oh, I've forgotten now, but a competitor to them. Uh, as well as Deimos, Tayo has remained a top competitor in the spacecraft industry ever since. In commemoration of the historic mon uh, moment, Ryogen threw a massive gala at the Astral Lounge. What's the Astral Lounge? It, has, it was said to be one of Neon's most prestigious events of the year. Okay, Astral Lounge must be a part of Neon, I guess. Several other CEOs were in attendance, including Synthetic Solutions' Bastion Porter and Hope Tech's very own Ron Hope. Ray DeCarius herself also made an appearance as one of Ryogen's founders and made a toast alongside Masako Emada and Simon Tayo to future success. Okay, now hiring. Ryujin Industries has announced that we are once again hiring the best and brightest of the settled systems. As a corporation, we're always taking on new hires. However, public announcements of job opportunities are rarely seen, making this a first in the past two years. We hope that many aspiring engineers and opportunists will see this as their chance to join our ever-growing team. Our latest ad campaign for interested candidates can be heard in both New Atlantis and Neon. Our job application is available at any Ryujin information kiosk. Okay. Uh, job application? Welcome to the Ryujin Industries job application. All questions must be answered in order for your application to be submitted. Uh, working this. Okay, I'm not going through a job interview. <laughs> Just yet. I've got Ryujin other things Industries that. Is looking for the 
young, bright minds of the future. Apply today. Maybe later. May maybe never. Um, <laughs> the Gal Bank, Outland, what? UC Distribution Center. Okay. Check. Rifle. Already stowed. Fuel. Both ship and generator. Waiting in the cargo hold. All right. Then I guess. I guess there's nothing between us and. Setting up on a brand new world. Oh. You, uh, ready to head out then? One last drink? Oh, God. Yes. Huh. So hold on. Setting up a brand new Done world? The search, the prep. Now we just have to take that leap. Um. Wait, I'm intrigued about this, and I'll explain why in a second. We've been talking about setting up our own little outpost for years now, but actually taking that leap. Just need to calm my nerves a little. Off we go. After one last drink. So they're going to set up a colony on a on a an uninhabited planet. Hmm, okay. Um interesting to hear because I, I, I suppose there's a big difference between... Wait, is this actually a bridge? Oh, wow. I suppose there's a big difference between setting up an outpost somewhere and setting up a brand new colony. Ooh, what's Infinity? Oh my god, there's so many stores. And the SSNN. Settle Systems News Network. Um, yeah, because setting up a colony on a new planet would be yeah. kind of similar to what started the Colony War. It took years to get it looking just like this. Whatever you say. <laughs> I know, you think this is a joke of a job. But keeping the grounds immaculate, you can take pride in it. Nobody cares who nobody's looking at. These greens are the heart of the commercial district. And if it's clean, if it's thriving, so is New Orleans. I'm just here for the paycheck. <laughs> You'll come around. You'll see. It seems like people are mostly quite happy with their lot here. Wait, that's not oh, okay. I thought that was my new friend. Um, are quite happy with their lot here. The gardener lady, the the cleaner Donna that we met in the uh, the gnat station. Commercial. I was about to say, it feels like we've actually moved to a different district here. This is the commercial district. We're going to have to come and explore this properly at some point, I think. But for now, the spaceport is calling. Let's see if Sarah can actually get in the train this time. Looks like we've also still got the residential district to go and uh, pay a visit to. Okay. Let's see if we can actually make it to the ship without getting waylaid. Let's see if I can hopefully find where to drop off all of this junk as well. well I wonder if our um Oh, excellent! Managed to make some progress in weightlifting. Wonder if our diplomat friend has uh, managed to sneak through yet. I'm hoping the embassy sent someone down to deal with that. Uh well he's not there at the bottom of the ramp, so I guess so. So, casting my mind back to the shipmaster, he said that there was a kiosk at the ramp. I'd assumed he meant at the bottom. What is that? Oh, there's him. Oh, is that the? Is that what I've been looking for? Ship services. Hello. Hey, what can I do for you? Kind of breaking my concentration here. Sorry, I'm literally just standing here. Trade authority kiosk. Here we go. Right. Nice. I can actually sell all my crap now. So what do I not need? Um, I don't need two eons. Equinox. I'm going to get rid of that for now because, like I said, laser weapons don't seem to be overly effective at the moment. Exterminator Kraken. Oh, but we've also got the Med Theft Kraken, haven't we? Um, damage increases as health decreases and chance that humans drop extra med packs. Yeah, I'm going to keep hold of that one. Uh, get rid of this Kraken. 
mm, do I want to keep hold of it? I'm going to get rid of the laser weapons for now because they've been pretty much useless. I'll get rid of the Grendels because they're not as effective as the Maelstroms. Yeah, they're not as good. Uh, did I not... Yeah, I'm using a, uh, a modified Maelstrom, so I'll get rid of the regular ones. Uh, Grendel can go away. Modified Solstice can go away. As can Rattler, the two rescue axes. And the suppressed Maelstrom. <laughs> We're not going to be using suppressors for a little while, I don't think. Uh, nice, so that's taking us down to 125 and 145. Let's take a look. I'm going to get rid of some spacesuits as well. So this is our basic deep mining spacesuit. Um, right, something I need to keep an eye on is the different types of resistances that each suit has. So thermal, airborne, corrosive, radiation. Okay, so those are the different types of resistances. I don't want to keep anything piratey. I'll get rid of that. Uh, well, let's... This is literally combat veteran minus 15% damage from human enemies. Yeah, we'll keep hold of that one. Get rid of the deep... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, you'll get less than the item was worth. That's fine. I just want red at the moment. Packs? Oh, how many packs have we got? Um, What do these pirate raiding packs do? do for us not a huge amount i'll get rid of those like i said i don't particularly want to be flying any pirate colors the tunnel mining pack these two are boost packs this isn't so that's useless to us let's get rid of that the chameleon space trucker pack chameleon blend with the environment while sneaking and not moving Ooh, is that like a cloak and it's a boost pack and that's the basic boost pack that Sarah gave us as part of the, the Constellation welcome package. So um, they've got differences in... So I, I guess the, the, the resistances of these add on top of the armor and the helmet. I'll keep hold of both of them just until I am a little bit more familiar with how that works. But yeah, we're down to 85 mass, which is oh, and helmets... Yeah, get rid of those nasty things. Cool, we're down to seventy-nine all kilos. That junk you're hauling is seriously slowing you down. Uh, was I? I've literally just squeezed all of it into that tiny little green box. If you were paying attention, you probably would have noticed. Vasco, here you are, old boy. Hello, hi. Hello. Hello. Are you? Are you getting on? Or do you just patrol? Oh, of course, he doesn't actually get in, does he? He goes. He said he was going into some sort of robotics bay. I'll tell you what I haven't done. I haven't actually had a walk around this thing to take it its scale. It's it's pretty massive when you when you actually look at it. This one's this is labeled as a 221 megawatt dragon. <laughs> Horizon laser just about legible there. So that must be our laser blaster. Here's our cockpit, looking up at the pilot seat. Very cool. Uh, what is? That's a dragon. Wait, hold on. That's a dragon as well. Is it? I thought we had... I thought we had a ballistic weapon on one side. Well, they must both be lasers. Oh, I wonder if that's our ballistic weapon. Is it? Hmm. And then up here... That looks like our missile array very cool look at these thrusters i mean it's it's one of the smallest ships that you can get in the game i think <laughs> and it's humongous oh, i wonder if that is where vasco chills out presumably that opens up and he doesn't just hang on to the <laughs> the, the silver grips on the outside right let's get in there captain azure Greetings. That's me. Oh, God, he's going to be upstairs, isn't he? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Here he is on my ship. Oh, activities. Check out ship's inventory. Okay, don't mind if I do. Yes, my captain. Ah, uh, nothing for now. As you were. Uh, yeah, you take a seat, Sarah. Put in some earplugs as well. You might need them. Um, oh, shout out to Eric as well, who mentioned something. Uh, he said... Here we go. Yes, 
mentioned that the cargo hold, the ship's cargo hold, is there on the left of the cockpit. Um, Captain's locker is there. That's where we pulled the, the learned astronomer. But let's see. Check out ship's inventory. Is that what that meant, that objective? Doesn't seem to have actually cleared it. Let's take a look at... Here's the missions board. Toggle which quest is tracked on your HUD. Only one quest can be tracked at a time. Select the name of the quest to expand the list of open objectives. Select any objective in the quest to track the whole quest. You can press the set course button to automatically navigate to your quest objectives. Active quest's objective. Okay. Right, it's added back to the grind as a mission, which I'm not so bothered about. Let's take a look at activities. Check out your ship's inventory. Is that not what I just... Yeah, here we go. That's kind of what I just did, isn't it? Uh, Maybe I have to take something out? Oh, there we go. Yeah, mission updated, I think. <laughs> Transfer. Uh, go back to my inventory. I want to put that back because I'm really not bothered about carrying that with me. Um... Uh, did these oh these all take up right these all take up carry weight it would be handy to store those then miscellaneous what's this oh the junk yeah i didn't oh my god I picked up all board games and things star locked two to four players edge eight plus scholar sisters can you settle the settled systems that's kind of cool actually <laughs> crimson fleet freestyle you see and what's the green swirly symbol down in the bottom right is that is that house varun maybe uh, anyway, we don't need to be uh, looking at this nonsense. Cool. So, oh, we got a handy dandy skylight. Next stop, Mars. We're going to go and track down this guy and uh, see if we can liberate him of that artifact that he seems to be carrying around like willy nilly, like some uh, some worthless trinket. But guys, thank you very much for joining me. If you'd like to leave a like or you care to leave a comment, pop those down in the usual spot. Um, where's he gone? <laughs> Where is he? Uh, Sarah? Did you see where our pal went? Oh, is he in the smallest room? I think he might be in the smallest room. <laughs> is he? No. <laughs> Where's he gone? Right, that's making me slightly nervous. Although if I take off quick enough, I might actually leave him behind. Um, <laughs> yeah. It would be great to see you in the next one. And uh, pop on over to the Discord as well. If uh, you want to come and join in the conversation, it would be great to see you over there. But until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.